Hey there, I'm going to walk you through a piano recording session I did in Studio A over at the UCM Recording Studios. Uh, I was using a Steinway Concert Grand Piano and I set up several different sets of microphones in more or less standard techniques. So first, here's a photo of the recording session. I've got the piano set up in front of some absorbers uh, so that we're not getting much in the way of reflection off of that, that, that wall behind it. Uh, and then we've got several different pairs of microphones. We have a pair of Mojave tube condensers here in mid-side configuration, about five feet away from the piano. We've got a set of Neumann Tam 184s in XY stereo placed right in the curve of the piano. We have a spaced pair of Shure KSM 44 microphones, uh, and they're actually set up in bi-directional mode instead of uh, cardioid, which is a little unusual. Um, spaced pair is also, of course, often in, in omnidirectional. In this particular case, I chose bi-directional because of the strong null that that gives me on the sides of the microphones to position the nulls carefully so that each one of them is rejecting what the other one is picking up. Uh, there is a pair of Shure SM57s here mounted about two feet above the hammers of the piano. And then it's a little hard to see in this photo, but right there on the lid of the piano, there's a Crown PZM30 boundary microphone taped to the lid. Uh, and we're going to hear that that has an interesting uh, sound as well. So let's go ahead and jump right into the logic session and start listening. I think it's worth noting that in this session, I have applied no EQ, no compression. I haven't really done anything in terms of mixing. I haven't added any reverb. I haven't done any of the things that we, you likely would do uh, in a uh, solo piano recording session. Uh, the only thing that I have done is I went through and I made sure uh, that all of the tracks are normalized to the same peak value. Now they were already pretty close because I took a lot of care in setting my preamps to get everything pretty close up to the same level, uh, but I don't want to mislead anybody or mislead myself about you know the qualities of the different microphone setups, uh, and so I didn't want for us to be making judgments based on one thing being louder or, or less loud, uh, and so I did go through and I normalized them all to negative 6 dBFS uh, measured on the peak. And um, that really does, I think, help, at least for me, it, it helps to, uh, to you know, be able to assess the, the different timbral and uh, spatial qualities of each microphone setup. All right, so what I have are two different excerpts. Uh, this is just me improvising at the piano, and I'm not a, a fantastic pianist, but um, the, the excerpt on the right here is somewhat um, spacier, more ar arpeggiated, um, lots of room for the strings to resonate. On the left, this is a more percussive uh, uh, excerpt over here. So let's go ahead and jump in and listen here. We'll start each time with the, we'll just start at the top and work our way down. So this is the KM184s. Uh, again, they're positioned X, Y in the piano and they sound like this. Okay, so as you might expect, that XY pair of KM184 is placed right in the curve of the piano, gives us an up-close perspective, gives us a very balanced sound of the piano. Uh, it's not a particularly wide stereo image, but it is true to life. Uh, but when we compare that spatial image uh, between these microphones and the next pair, the KSM44s in AB, um, set up with bidirectional uh, patterns on the microphones, we're going to hear that the image jumps out to be much, much wider uh, and, and to, to my ear, maybe more beautiful. That said, I think I should have taken a little bit more care placing these KSM44s and, and really listening um, back and forth before I committed to the placement because I think they're actually a little bit too wide uh, and we're, far, we're, we're sort of getting a little bit of a, of a hole in the center of the phantom image here. So that's a really, really wide image, really beautiful sound uh, with that pair of microphones. It, it's a good choice for that particular kind of music. Um, now the PZM microphone, this is the one that's on the lid of the, micro, or the, lid of the piano. This is a Crown PZM30, uh, and it's a boundary microphone. 
And one of the things about boundary microphones is that when they are placed on large surfaces, they do a better job of picking up bass than they do if they're just sort of suspended in air or, or put on a, a smaller surface. Um, and so a, a surface as big as the lid of a piano actually does a really good job of enabling the microphone to capture bass. Um, so we're going to hear this even more with the percussive excerpt, but even with this one, go ahead and listen, especially for that bottom end and see what you hear. Recognize too, this is a mono microphone, so all of the, the imaging is going to be just right down the middle. There, there is no stereo here. So not a bad sound, it's kind of very mid-rangey, um, but again, that bottom is, is, pretty, is pretty impressive. And I think again, as I mentioned before, when we jump over to the percussive excerpt, we're gonna find that this is a microphone uh, that you might use as a sort of a, a, an additional uh, source within a mix to really help uh, bring up the punch of the bottom down there. Let's jump to the SM57s, spaced pair of SM57s above the hammers of the piano. They're positioned to split the range of the piano roughly into thirds. Uh, and I think you'll hear that, again, the stereo image on this is, is pretty good. Um, and the sound overall is kind of surprisingly good given the, the, the particular microphones that we're using here, right? The SM57, of course, is an industry warhorse, um, but it's not something that most people think of as, you know, being a go-to microphone for piano. So it's not too bad. I, you know, again, this would not be my favorite pair to use, um, and it wouldn't be the pair that I would choose from these in this session for this particular part of the music. Um, but it's it's actually a surprisingly decent piano sound. Um, one of the things that really jumps out to me about this is how much more the attack of each note comes through, which you would of course expect with the, the microphones positioned right above the hammers. Uh, and finally, we've got a mid side pair down here at the bottom. This is the pair that's about five feet away from the piano, uh, and you're going to hear the overall environment come through much more in, in this set of microphones. It gives a very different perspective from all of the others that we've heard so far. So I think it's easy to hear in that one that the piano feels like it's more kind of over there instead of right up in, in front of us in, in the mix. So let's jump over to the percussive excerpt now, and we'll walk through the same microphones again in the same order and see what we hear over here. Now this is again the KS, or sorry, the KM184s, the Neumann pair, uh, small diaphragm condensers in XY placed right in the curve of the piano. So again, pretty good picture of the, what's happening with the piano. Not a super wide stereo image, but you know, uh, high fidelity, you know, good definition, good balance. Uh, compare that to the KSM 44s. Again, this is the space pair of large diaphragm condensers. So we heard in the previous excerpt that this pair. Uh, gave us a much, much wider stereo image than the KM184s did. And we hear that again here, and I actually think it's too wide uh, for this particular kind of music. Uh, I feel like almost like I'm listening to a tennis match with the, the bass over here and the, the treble over there. Um, so maybe not my first choice for an entire uh, song or an entire record of this sort of music where the hands are alternating quite a bit. Uh, I think the stereo image is just a little bit too wide. Of course, we could also do some work with uh, with with plugins or or just with the the panning on the the channel to to bring that image uh, in a little bit, and that that might help too. Uh, so comparing that with the PZM. Wow. 
style. So the bass really comes through on this one, and um, it you know adds a lot of boom on the bottom. Again, I don't know that this would be the the track that I would choose to use here, um, but I might actually use this track to support uh, or supplement a, a different one, and we'll come back to that in a second. So here is that pair of 57s over the hammers. So as you might expect, I mean, a, a, a mic like this, a dynamic mic like this is always going to smear the transient a little bit and it's going to fatten it up, right, and give it some extra punch and extra heft, kind of the way that, that it does for snare drums and, and other things where we, you know, see the 57, uh, you know, being a really popular choice. It actually is a pretty decent sound um, for this particular kind of music. And if I was making, you know, a rock record where the piano was, was you know, doing this sort of thing a lot, um, I might consider, you know, either placing a different pair of microphones in this position um, or possibly even, you know, working with these 57s as, as at least part of the, the mix of, of things that I'm capturing. Uh, it's still not my favorite pair, uh, but especially for this sort of percussive music, it does a pretty good job. So let's listen to the spaced pair, or sorry, the, uh, the distant pair here, the mid-side pair, and see what they sound like. So again, obviously just a very different perspective from the others, um, kind of a more realistic perspective in that this is probably the way that we would normally hear a piano is, you know, from a distance as opposed to being right up on, and playing it. Um, but I have to say that for any sort of a pop production, this likely would not be the position that I would I would use in, in my mix. Um, I'm, you know, it's good for, for documentation or for uh, classical or, or, you know, possibly jazz uh, if you really want to make it feel like you're, you're in the space with it. But um, for all of these tracks so far, for this kind of playing, I think I, I'd rather be closer up on the piano. Um, that's, of course, a, a matter of personal preference. Now, if what if we took that pair that was too wide, these KSM-44s, and we added in the Crown PZM microphone as a means of sort of nailing down the center a little bit. I'm going to bring this down. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it on and see how these guys work together here. That's not bad. Actually, it might be something to play around with, right? So anyway, that gives us a little bit of a walk through these different uh, tracks. Um, you've heard at least what I think about them. Uh, obviously, you know, if you're one of my students who's looking at this, I've already shared this session with you. You're welcome to pull up the, the full recordings uh, that these excerpts come from and play with them and see what you think. Obviously, try out some EQ, try out some reverb, try out different kinds of processing. Uh, if there's anybody else watching this who's just interested in playing around with these files, you're welcome to them. Just shoot me an email and I'll be happy to share them with you. All right, that's it for now. See you in the next video.